This video is part one of a multi-part series designed to get you up and running using DSTAR as your digital voice protocol. The other videos in this series will focus on using the ICOM ID31A+, which is ICOM's current entry-level DSTAR handheld. Let's get started. When I got my new ICOM ID31A Plus D-Star Handy Talkie, I found it a bit confusing despite the fact that I've been using DMR and System Fusion radios, which are the other two primary digital voice protocols. So my goal here is to combine info from a bunch of sources into a brief overview of D-Star as a system. I find that I understand things better if I know how things hang together and how they interact. At the same time, I hope to save you some time researching the topic. Since DSTAR's beginning, various ease of use improvements either hid the functions or changed the names of various elements, which made wrapping my mind around this whole thing a bit of a challenge. Let's start by taking a quick trip through the D-Star universe and put the basics together so we'll be able to better understand what's happening with our new ICOM ID31A+. And, oh by the way, lots of the info in these videos will apply to the ICOM ID51A+, too. D-Star is an acronym that stands for Digital Smart Technology for Amateur Radio. It's an open source protocol developed in the late 1990s by the Japanese Radio Relay League, which, unlike the ARRL in the United States, has some governmental rulemaking authority. ICOM released its first D Star radio in 2004 and called it the ID1. Like DMR and System Fusion, D-Star is a digital voice protocol that converts the audio of the spoken voice into digital signals that the radio transmits to a local repeater or a personal hotspot. Also like DMR and System Fusion, D-Star gets its worldwide reach by connecting to the Internet. You can connect directly to other D-Star repeaters through your local repeater or hotspot, or connect to reflectors. Reflectors are the D-Star version of DMR's talk groups or fusions, nodes, and rooms. Reflectors are computers that forward all incoming traffic to all the devices that are linked to them. It's this internet connection that allows even the entry-level technician class operator licensee to be able to chat with folks all around the world. This is where things started to get a bit more confusing for me, however. There are four variables that must be set correctly to get your voice call to the right place. As D-Star matured and new radios came out with some nifty new features, naming control got a little lax and the same four items were often referred to differently. Let's take a look. The first element is called My. You'll also see it listed in various menus as My Station, My Call Sign, Originator, and just My. This element is your government-issued amateur radio call sign. You'll only need to set this once in most new radios. In the ID31 Plus, you can also set an additional identifier such as a short name or radio model number after a slash. The next element is called RPT1. You'll also see it referred to as Repeater1 and R1. This data element is the repeater you are transmitting to. It's the first step for the signal from your radio to the D-Star system. It's how you want to access the D-Star network. It can be a repeater or a hotspot. This element contains two important components. 
The first is the repeater's call sign, and the second is the module you are using. Now, the call sign is easy to understand, but what's a module? As shown in this picture, I think of a repeater as a bank of black boxes in a rack in a radio room or vault. In some cases, a repeater owner will have a box to handle 2 meter signals, another to handle 70 centimeter signals, and another box to coordinate or control the various boxes, and one to connect to the internet. In the D-STAR system, the 2 meter repeater is given a module identifier of C. The 70 centimeter repeater is given an identifier of B, and the 1.2 gigahertz repeater is given the identifier A. When you set up an RPT1 element, it must include the call sign and the module identifier in space 8. You'll use spaces in the spots between the end of the call sign and the letter you place in position 8. If you are planning to access your local 70 centimeter repeater with a call sign of K7ABC, your RPT1 element would be K7ABC space space B. Element 3 is RPT2. As with RPT1, you'll also see this listed as repeater 2 and R2. This element tells the D-STAR system where to send your transmission. There are only really two choices. One is to the internet gateway, and the other is to keep it only on the local repeater. When setting RPT2, you'll use a similar eight-character label. So, in our example, if we set K7ABC to be RPT1, we'd set RPT2 to be K7ABC space space G. The G stands for gateway. In the newer radios, this setting is sometimes hidden or assumed when other choices such as gateway CQ or use reflector are used. So, if you're linking to another repeater or reflector in the radio's to function, your radio will include a G in RPT2 space 8. If you are hearing traffic on a distant repeater or reflector, but no one answers you when you speak, you probably have chosen a setting where the G is not in R2 position 8. The final element is called UR. You'll also see this as your call sign or your call or destination. This one is a bit confusing. In English, it has to do with pronouns. When you read my, you think of yourself. When you read your call sign, you also think of yourself, but that's not how it's intended here. I try to think of you are as me pointing at someone and saying, you are Jerry, right? You are doesn't refer to you, it refers to the other guy. With D-STAR, the UR elements include several commands. In newer radios, those commands are still used in the UR element, but they're actually called indirectly. If you look closely at your ID31A+, you'll see that the command is a small letter on the display when accessed via the Use Repeater menu. In older radios, those commands had to be called by transmitting on a particular memory channel. More on that in a minute. So, what are those commands? First is the U or unlink command. It's used to unlink a repeater or reflector from your local repeater or hotspot, your RPT1. Next is L or link. It's used to link a repeater or reflector to your local repeater or hotspot. I, or information, is used to have the linked repeater or reflector tell you who it is. The ID31A Plus will use its voice system to announce the call sign and the info will scroll across the bottom of the radio screen. The last command is echo test or just echo. 
With the E command, you can use the press to talk button on the radio to talk to the device and it will play your message back to you. This is like Parrot on DMR. In older radios, these commands were transmitted via a memory channel. In newer radios, these commands are menu choices. Regardless, the command format is the same. For memory channels, you program in seven spaces and place the appropriate letter in space eight, except for with the link command. With menu choices, the radio does that for you. When using the linking command in older radios, you'd program the repeater call sign or reflector that you want to link to, and then add spaces until space seven, where you'd add the correct module letter and the L for the link command. With the ID31A+, you'll make a menu choice and then use the knob on the radio to dial in either the call sign letters and numbers or the reflector number, then the module letter, and finish up with the letter L. These four data elements are how you control the D-Star system. If you get these wrong, something isn't going to work right. Menu choices in the newer radios make making mistakes less likely. But understand, these formatting rules are happening in the background to ensure everything works. This chart shows you a couple of examples of the data elements and how you'd configure them to do a couple of common D-star functions. The next thing we need to talk about are memories and memory categories. Your ID31A Plus or ID51A Plus have several memory categories. These have resulted from ease of use features that were added to D-Star radios over the years. Here's a chart with several radios memory allocations. What you see is the addition of DR and UR memories as well as a shift to more DR and UR memory channels and fewer regular memory channels. Let's take a quick look at how you might have programmed the regular memory channels to operate older D-Star radios. When I got a basic understanding of this concept, the hidden or direct select functions of my ID31A made much more sense. This chart shows how you'd operate in D-Star mode using regular memories. In fact, you still can if you prefer. Notice the memories are grouped in blocks. This chart shows 10 memories per block, so the first digit would indicate what repeater you're using. With 10 channels per block, you'd have room for the UR control commands plus several reflectors you could easily choose from. In this detailed view, note that within each block, the only items changing are the name and UR columns. Also note the L commands include the desired repeater or reflector identifier. I, E, and U commands can still include the repeater call signs eh, or not. RPT1 indicates a 70 centimeter repeater and RPT2 indicates a gateway call. To operate using this memory management technique, you'd speak on channel 1. You'd press the push to talk button to execute UR commands such as unlink or info on their respective channels and use the desired repeater or reflector channels to link to those destinations. You would then go back to channel 1 to talk. For a different repeater or repeater module, you would change the repeater information and set up the UR memories as you did for group 1. You would go to memory 21 or 31 to talk. While you could set this up via the radio's menus, as a practical matter, you'd use your programming software. If you don't have a long list of favorite reflectors, you can go to dstarinfo.com and download a CSV file for regular memories that include the UR command channels and up to three 
D-star reflectors. Then it's as easy as importing to your radio's regular memories. Again, understanding how this worked really helped me visualize what was happening with the DR memories we'll look at next. As you remember from the memory allocation chart, new D-star radios have reduced regular memories and increased DR and UR memory allocations. You can use DR memory slots as regular memories, but not the other way around. Your new ID31 Plus or ID51A Plus comes with some DR memories already programmed to help you get started. Look for my ID31A Plus programming videos for info on updating the repeater list from dstarinfo.com. DR memories contain important repeater information your radio needs to contact it. Like the programming chart earlier, it includes the repeater call sign, frequency, duplex offset, tone, mode, module, gateway, call sign, and so forth. All DR memories entries also contain an entry for its latitude and longitude and its UTC offset. The latitude and longitude entries allow the nearest repeater function to work properly. More on that in a minute. In case you're wondering, DR stands for D-Star Repeater Mode. DR memories are grouped by area such as Canada, USA Southeast, USA West, and so forth. Name values in the memory entry allow easy scrolling through long lists to quickly find the repeater you're looking for. For example, DR memories include a city and state info such as Phoenix, Arizona or Stockton, California. When you have your GPS turned on and your radio has a GPS lock, you can use the nearest repeater function to identify the closest repeaters to you. This makes finding a repeater super easy. Access from the highlighted from command display on your ID31A or 51A, this is the same as setting RPT1. The UR memories are located in the two function menu in the DV memories choice. Their category is called your call sign. That's Y O U R call sign. In both the radio menu and the programming software, the label's the same. There are 200 memory slots in this category for both the ID31A and 51A. You will use these memory slots to do a couple of important tasks. First, you'll use the function to call an individual station. Using the handset controls or your computer keyboard with the programming software, you'll enter your associate's name such as Bill W and his call sign. When making a gateway call, the D-Star system will know the last place Bill was and direct the call to that repeater. This is sometimes referred to as call sign routing. As D-Star use has expanded, this contact method has kind of fallen out of favor as the system has no way of knowing whether another QSO is happening on the destination repeater. The break-in can sometimes be seen as rude. Another use for the UR memories, which is really cool, is that you can program in other than REF labeled reflectors. That means if you want your radio to link to a DCS or XRF reflector, you can set it here. You can also set up the UR commands here, which will allow you to execute those commands by just dialing them up on the knob instead of going into the keypad menu. This is similar to the regular memory programming method I discussed earlier. In this example, you might program memory 1 in your call sign as use repeater CQ CQ CQ, memory 2 as unlink seven spaces and U, and so forth. Follow on memory channels can be set for other reflectors or perhaps with. D-Star net label names with their corresponding reflector IDs. 
When programming non-REF reflectors, though, you'll give the memory a name for the reflector and the call sign would be either DCS or XRF and the number plus the module plus L for link. So the your call sign entry for the XRF006 alpha reflector would be XRF006AL. Most D-star reflectors have 26 modules. They're listed from A to Z. Now, just to further complicate this, there is another reflector naming convention that you'll see if you start looking for interesting reflectors to explore. That convention is called XLX. According to an interesting post by F4FXL on the F4FXL.org website, XLX isn't a network protocol. Instead, it's a translator of sorts that allows many different protocols to interact with the reflector. Since this isn't a reflector tutorial, I'll stop there. Just know that if you find an XLX reflector that looks interesting, you'll need to program it with a DCS or an XRF prefix, not XLX. According to F4FXL, either one will take you to the same place. As mentioned earlier, you can easily change the UR commands in the new ICOM radios by turning the knob when in the To function and you have Use Reflector selected. You can easily move from the CQ, CQ, CQ to I to E to U to execute those important commands. The last thing we'll discuss in this DSAR basic video is registration. As with DMR, you have to register with the DSTAR network to get outside a local repeater. You get no gateway access if you aren't registered. Registration is a three-step process. First, go to the dstarinfo.com and select the repeater list. Select the area of the country where you live. Next, Find a repeater close to you that includes the info and register links in its call sign box. Note the warnings and instructions to see if your call sign is already registered. Multiple registrations cause trouble with the DSTAR system. On the register screen, input your call sign in all caps and your desired password and other contact information. When the form is submitted, the repeater admin will verify your registration and input you into the system. This can take anywhere from a few hours to a few days. When registered, you'll get an email with a link to complete your registration. Go to your Gateway's registration page and log in. Go to the Personal Information page to complete your information. For most people, you'll only need to check the first box in the list and type a space in the box in the initial column. Click Update and you're done. If you don't get an email in a couple of days, try logging in as a user anyway. If you get in, you might have missed the return email or it may have gone into your spam file. If you've understood the key concepts here, you're ready to tackle basic D-Star operations. Please be on the lookout for the other videos in this series. If you found this video helpful, please click on the thumbs up button below the video and subscribe to the Gadget Talk channel. Subscriptions and thumbs up clicks influence YouTube's algorithms, so are important to small channels like this one. Click the bell icon to be notified when I post new videos. 73 and thanks for watching.